So I'm reading a Daphne du Maurier book. I'm reading The Loving Spirit. This is the book that was in this video where I predicted that there were some books that I might give five stars, I might give one star, but I definitely want to try each of them. This is one that I thought might be a one star because I've DNF'd this before. I've tried to read it before and I quit on it and now I'm reading again and I love it, but I have the same problems I had before. So the same, the thing that I often cite with a Maurier as the reason she's one of my top authors of all time is because no one immerses me in an in a setting, in an atmosphere like Maurier does. She transports me there in the most physical way any author has ever transported me to a setting. And she almost always writes seaside settings, so I feel it. Um, but another thing that I love about Maurier is sometimes in some of her novels she really hones in on the feeling of being a woman who is an adventurer and um, like a woman who has this passion for setting sail to the sea or to finding a new adventure or discovering something different about her life, not, um, not being domestic. And there's nothing wrong with being domestic, obviously, but in Du Maurier's time, in the time that Daphne Du Maurier lived in, and in the time that her novels are set in, a woman being an adventurer in her soul, in her spirit, as a piece of who she is as a person, wasn't what was expected or accepted for a woman. Domestic life was what was expected and accepted. So she takes these women who who just don't fit into the culture that Du Maurier herself didn't fit into, and she writes it so well. And as someone who, when I talk to Corey about, when I talk to anybody about who I am as a person, I always say I'm an adventurer. Like, that's one of the first adjectives I would use to describe myself. Um, you know, hiking, exploring, traveling, going into the woods, adventuring is one of the number one top things that I think is a piece of who I am as a person. And so I really connect to her, uh, to her heroines, her um, main characters, in novels like this one and like Frenchman's Creek because even though I would never make some of the choices that they make, I, I, I understand because I feel like I've been drawn into a time that I'm very grateful that I wasn't born into because I know that I wouldn't fit there either, you know what I mean? And, and she writes these women that don't fit and I just like, I can't imagine. I can't imagine living in that time. And and in this book, particularly in The Loving Spirit, Thomas, our main character, our main character's name is Janet, her, her husband, he's wonderful. He's this caring, kind, soft, loving man who is wonderful. And she has these incredible children that she loves dearly and, and treats wonderfully. And she loves her domestic life. She loves her life at home. She's very satisfied with the ins and the outs and the day to day. But there's two pieces of her. There's two sides of who she is as a person. There's this domestic life that she's fulfilled in and that she's happy. And then there's the, the adventurous life that she's not had the chance to fulfill because she can't because that's not what this time was. And um, it's just fascinating because, you know, I, I'm blessed to live in this time, so I get to be an adventurer, and I love my domestic life, I love being a, a wife and a mom, and I love being an adventurer, and having to split those two pieces of yourself would be so difficult. And Du Maurier, she writes it. <laughs> it's like, I, I feel it. But also, Janet has a really weird relationship with her son. At first, it seems normal. It seems fine. It seems like, oh, okay, you're living vicariously through your son. He, he has your spirit, that need for adventure, that impulsiveness, that recklessness, that getting caught up in the wind. He holds so much of who you are as a person. But like it gets, it crosses lines. It's weird, it's a little incesty. It's not so much, oh, my son who I can, who I can live vicariously through. I see a future for him that I'm not able to have. But there's also some weird, there's weird lines in there. I don't know, it doesn't ever like fully cross the line or at least as far as I've read, but it's, 
she depicted it in a weird way. Anyway, um, I am 100 pages into this, which is exactly how far I got when I quit last time. And I'm not gonna quit this time, and I'm having an amazing time. But it does have its flaws. Anyway, I'll let you know what I think of it, because I will be finishing it this time. And I, I love Du Maurier. I just do. my shelves but I'm not fully I don't think I'm done yet this whole section hasn't been touched because I like the way it looks but I kind of do want to do something because it's been like that for a long time mix it up but I really like the way it looks so I don't know I moved Sanderson over here because I now have too many Sanderson books he doesn't fit on one of these little shelves these back shelves are longer so I can actually fit my entire Sanderson collection on one of these shelves but I don't really like having him so far away. I kind of want to have him over here like he's been, but I ha there's not enough of his books to take up two shelves. So there he sits for now. Um, I still have this, I still have a whole stack of fantasy books that are just not on my shelves now. So I'm considering, uh, since I don't have any place to put them, I have a bookshelf over there that's not really being used, a small one. So I'm considering turning that part of my room into a reading corner. And so I could take all my classics and maybe my nonfictions as well and stick them over there and make like a little pretentious reading corner and then fill that with fantasy books. I don't know. I'm still trying to figure it out. I'm not done. I'm not done sorting these shelves out. What I have done though is I finished The Loving Spirit and I realized that I didn't really tell you what this book was about in the last clip. We just kind of talked about incest and um, <laughs> that is a big factor of this book and I'm not sure I can really tell you what this book is about if I'm honest with you because I still don't know <laughs> what Du Maurier was trying to do. So this is a family saga. We follow four generations of, of a family starting with Janet. This is the one that I told you about before who has these, she has a great domestic life. She loves her life but she also has these great ambitions, this desire for adventure that she really can't pursue without kind of isolating herself from society because it's not accepted. And um, I love that. <laughs> That's all. She also has this very strange and uncomfortable relationship with her son. And uh, we follow Janet and then we follow her son and then his son and then his daughter. So four generations and it's this whole family drama, family saga. It's, it's, so this book was inspired by a poem written by Emily Bronte, which I can totally see the Bronte inspirations in this. In fact, there were there were times where I felt like I was reading a lesser version of Wuthering Heights. Truly, I don't know what Du Maurier was attempting to do with this. Um, so we follow Janet at the beginning, and then after she dies, we her spirit stays on and at time inserts itself into the story. We're primarily following the generations, but there are a couple, there are a few, a very small number of very short scenes where Janet's spirit kind of uh, pushes its way through the story and speaks uh, to uh, the other generations in their times of need. And it's this... I guess, I guess it's about a mom who just loves her family so darn much that she needs to follow them and be with them, but only the ones that she likes the most. <laughs> only those kiddos, only that family line. The ones that are, that take after her in some way, I suppose. I, honestly, I don't know. I don't know. I tried. Du Maurier is one of my favorite authors, and I tried real hard to understand what she was doing with this book, and frankly, I don't. I 
don't. This is her first published novel, and what I do appreciate is that there's a lot of Du Maurier in this novel. Obviously, she wrote it, but there's a lot of her writing that I love that I could see here in this slightly unhoned way. Like, it was cool to see her beginnings and to see where she started and how she kind of shaped over the years, so I really liked that aspect of it. For the life of me, I couldn't figure out what De Maurier was attempting to do with this relationship that she wrote between Janet and her son, and it took up too much of my brain space, so I ended up doing some Googling and trying to figure out why. Why'd you do it? Why'd you write it like this? And um, it turns out that later in De Maurier's life, she kind of openly spoke about the unfortunate relationship that she had with her father. And a lot of her books, there's a lot of her in them. Like, um, a lot of her female leads share a lot of the uh, inner turmoil that, that Du Maurier herself had at being a woman in her time and having this desire uh, for adventure and for life and for exploring and a lot of things. Um, Rebecca, her most popular novel, she wrote after she found a box of letters from her husband's ex-lover letter to her husband that he kept and in her jealousy, she plotted out Rebecca. Uh, so she inserts a lot of herself into her novels and I don't like this, but I can now say that I understand what she was working through. I don't recommend this book to you. Please read any other Du Maurier, but I'm glad I read it because it was cool to see where one of my favorite authors began. I now know one of my favorite authors a far more than I would have had I not sought out why <laughs> this book. I don't know. Honestly, I don't know how I feel about this book. I really don't. I both loved and hated it. I super don't recommend it though. Next up, I've started Never Caught. So I'm 50 pages into this. It's only 200 pages long. So I am here and the book ends here and all this are, these are all the notes. So uh, it's a personal goal that, I, that I've set for myself that I haven't ever formally announced on the channel, but uh, to read at least one nonfiction every month for 2023. And this is, this is the one that I picked um, for, for February. This follows Ona Judge, who was one of the Washington's um, slaves, she, uh, George Washington and Martha Washington. This is a little bit of her story with them, as well as her story of escaping and being on the run uh, and, and taking her own freedom into her hands, as well as the Washington's pursuit to get their property back. So at the point of the novel that I'm in, uh, I'm still in the Washington estate, uh, which has been really fascinating because naturally there's not going to be a lot of information on Ona's early life as a slave because, you know, their lives just weren't documented very much. But there are um, interviews with Ona Judge that she talked a little bit about her life with the Washington, so there's some information to go off of, but there's also not that much. So there's a decent amount of, uh, of history around the time that needs to be pulled from, like, uh, documentation that we have of the Washingtons themselves, as well as of the time uh, that this is all, that this all took place in. So it is really interesting because I'm very interested in Ona's story, but I also really don't know that much about the Washingtons other than, you know, the very basic things that you learn in school. Uh, so I'm learning a lot more about their estate and about their policies and about uh, his first year years as president and, you know, the forming, of the, the beginnings of the country and the beginnings of all that's around everything that was happening at this time. It's been really fascinating. I've been really enjoying it.
before I forget because I forgot to talk about it in the last update, so we're gonna talk about it here. Cheers, there's a mermaid on this cup. I think it's important that you know that. Okay, so I read volumes 10 and 11 of Yona this week. By the way, my manga peeps, thanks for giving me feedback on the last video on what kind of updates you want. That was really helpful. Um, I will continue to do just quick spoiler free, here's the vibes, not going into spoilers for the vlogs, and we'll leave other videos for really digging into it. Um, so quick updates for Vagabond, a little bit longer for Yona. There were some questions about what I plan on doing as far as dedicated videos for Yona. I still haven't sorted that out because my vibes for Yona right now, my feelings for Yona right now, are that I'm enjoying it, but I'm not loving it. I'm having a good time, but it's not swept me away at the point that I am. And so I'm trying to decide at this point if I'm just going to get through the whole series, well, get caught up to where, as far as I can, and then just review it all in one video like I did with Spy Family, or if I'm going to get to a point where I say, oh, this is something special for me, and then I'll start maybe breaking it up into arcs, or maybe even just bring someone else on who loves the series and talk more in depth with them on the second channel like I've been doing with Vagabond I don't know I'm open to a couple different options but at this point I'm still trying to decide where how I feel about it because right now I'm enjoying it but I'm not enjoying it to the point that I feel like I want to do a ton of videos on it and I'm trying to pull back on just doing videos for everything that I read and instead kind of sussing out do I love this enough to do a video on it or do I need to give it a minute. So that's where I am with Yona. Now, as far as updates, I read volumes 10 and 11 this week. I really didn't like 10 at all and uh, and I, I really enjoyed 11. So 10 was one where a character that has been kind of a minor character was pulled more into the spotlight and he was very, very gags. And the series, with the way people are in love with one another, it's very over the top. It's very extreme. It's it's played off a lot for comedy, which I don't mind to an extent, but leaning an entire novel on those gags, I just, I was over it so fast. But all the platonic friendships, all, all the chemistry between the characters that are friends, love. Which is my, why my interest in volume 11 was brought back up when we got some flashbacks of some of our main crew when they were kids and their relationship and then kind of elevating the amount of pain and struggle that they're experiencing as kids. I mean, I mean as adults and kind of like kind of making those two things play off of each other and dig into the the way they the way the past is affecting the present and what they're currently going through. I loved 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 loved. As for Vagabond, I read the next Viz Big, so I've read the next 3 volumes. I've now read 7 through 9. Loved loved. I feel like we're really digging into the heart of the story and I am super excited to discuss this one with Philip. Quick update on that one because we know we're digging into that. Never caught. Finished it and it was excellent. Ona's story was fascinating and when she was uh, older um, we got some interviews with her uh, after the people who helped her um, which did I what did I say in the last clip? Um, she, this is her story with the Washingtons, but it's also her story after she escapes and she's on the run and she's fighting for her freedom, but it's not free to her, so she's having to hide. So, um, she didn't do any interviews or talk publicly at all about her story. She uh, intentionally stayed in the shadows because she didn't want to put anyone in danger, anyone that helped her or any of her family members or herself. She didn't want to put any anyone in danger. So even after laws had passed and she was a free woman, she still didn't want to t tell her story until pretty much everybody else had passed away and she felt like it was safe. It was fascinating. It was, it, it was really, really interesting to read. The one big old nitpick that I have about this nonfiction is the amount of speculation that happened. Now, Ona's story was not well documented and there's only so much that the author had to go off of to tell her story. So some speculation, totally understandable. And in fact, some speculation even in how she must have felt or what she must have been experiencing, totally understand 
in order to make her not just this far off historical figure, but to really bring her in and humanize her to the reader. So down for that. But there was so much unnecessary speculation that happened through the entire duration of this novel. Stuff like, uh, uh, telling the story of how the Washingtons uh, took a meeting with someone in their in their estate and and the meeting was real it was a real meeting that happened where certain information was being exchanged and th and then there's like this pause to say perhaps they they took their guest in in the the I don't remember foyer or so I don't remember the word used um, and perhaps they had coffee while they waited for Mr. W for George Washington to come in and, and join them in the meeting perhaps and it's like I, 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 just tell me about the meeting I don't need you to speculate what room they might have met in or uh, like there was a, a, a situation where Ona was walking down the street and she was approached by someone while she was on the run and uh, it, it, was, it was like the meeting was real, the approach was real, the situation was real, but it, you pause it to say perhaps she was walking down the street to go get groceries or perhaps she was trying to run some errands. It's like I don't care about that. Just tell me what happened. This was constant. I tell you constant. Like this person was on the run and a constable got them. Perhaps they fought with the constable. Perhaps they resisted. If they did, maybe the scuffle would have looked like this. I don't need it. And it was so often, at first, I was just like, okay, I understand what you're doing, but it was all through the entire duration of the novel. It kept coming up to the point that I actually started to really question things, where it was the author was trying to be clear of where she was speculating by using the word perhaps a lot, um, or she must have felt or she must have thought, using verbiage that made clear where the speculation started. But because the speculation was oftentimes woven in the facts, there were times where I'd be in the middle of, of reading something and I would stop and say, oh wait, is this speculation or did this happen? And I would have to, thankfully, as I said, there's tons of notes. All of this is notes. So it was really easy for me to flip over here and check references and know what was speculation and what was true. But it was a lot to the point that I was doing, I felt like there was, I shouldn't have had to question where the speculation started and ended. It's funny because I complained about this in another book recently, another nonfiction that I read, um, The Island of the Lost, I think it was what it was, I read it last month. And in that I said it felt like there just wasn't enough documentation of what this author was trying to trying to share the story, which trying to share with us. And so she just had to add stuff. So it was like, well, they hunted sea, sea they hunted seals, sea lions, they hunted sea lions. So uh, let's just talk about sea lion mating for a really long time. And it was like, that's not, I understand that they probably witnessed some sea lion mating, but I don't want pages and pages talking about this. But it, was, it felt like padding. And I don't know if this was padding or if it was an attempt to just bring the reader closer, but it was too much speculation for, for, for my taste. I really just wanted to know what happened. Still excellent, still recommend it, definitely recommend. It's just my, my qualm with this particular nonfiction, but still highly recommend. I think that Ona's story was fascinating and it gave information about Ona as well as a lot of context around the time as well. So. Definitely recommend. That's what I read this month. I, no, week, week. I read The Loving Spirit, which was an experience. I read Never Caught and More Yona and Vagabond. Feel free to chat with me more about any of these in the comments or let me know what you're reading this week. I post videos every Tuesday and Thursday on this channel, Monday and Friday on the main channel. I'll see you again soon. Bye.